Yo fam, to the number one daily Bitcoin pod. In today's show, we'll be breaking down the five things to watch out for in the Bitcoin market this week as we recaptured 70, 71, and even 72,000 here this morning. Also be sharing the latest prediction from Dan Tapiero, as well as Plan B, creator of the Bitcoin stock to flow model. We'll also be discussing Bitcoin needs to hold above $80,000 to keep mining profitable post having. We'll be discussing the Bitcoin having roughly only nine days away, as well as breaking news. China's largest funds apply for the spot Bitcoin ETF in Hong Kong. Let's freaking go. We'll also be discussing Bitcoin Bollinger Band signal suggests Bitcoin can double by July. Send it. We'll also be discussing 85,000 Bitcoin incoming as the next leg up, as well as the latest from Samson Mao predicting Bitcoin hitting a million dollars this year year in particularly. I'll be breaking down the latest from Samson Mao. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this plus so much more in today's show. Meanwhile, pump that mofo up. You already know, family. Just blaze. Bitcoin up $2,500 on the day. Still sitting above 71.3. Uh, I'm sorry, 71.7. We already touched uh, 73 a little earlier on today. We're on the cusp of reclaiming price discovery. New all-time highs around the corner. I've been calling new all-time high this week. 80,000, the next leg up. Let me know your thoughts on that. Shout out to everyone in the live chat. What it do, McFoot and Ader? Let's go. Bitmas Prime, JV, look directly at the sun. <laughs> now he can't find his key. Keyboard. <laughs> what up? You guys watched that solar eclipse? What it looked like where you guys are at? Do let me know. 80,000 this week. Send it to Calistinian. I think today's Bitcoin pump outshines the eclipse. <laughs> Cheers on that, Don. I agree. Just my opinion. Welcome. Yes, this is live and interactive. Let me know where you're tuned in from. Don't be a stranger. 100% chance Bitcoin will go to a million plus. Only limiting factor. Adoption rate, speed, and how quickly the world will wake up to the value of Bitcoin, says Peter. Shout out Russia. Appreciate you guys tuned in. 71,000. Wow, pump it up. Yeah, damn straight. We pumping it up. We up 2,500 on the day, and the day is still young. Send it, Wayne. 80,000. Here we go. Pump the likes to pump the stream. Let's celebrate, shall we? 77 or 79. Bolt sound good to me, Jay Ford. Boston, nothing yet, says Anthony. I didn't see nothing here yet in Puerto Rico as well. Nothing in South Kakalake. Shout out to South Kakalake. Okay. I think today's pump outshined the eclipse by far, says Don. It seems to be that way. Omar, what it do? 90% wasn't darty in NYC. Uh, pumping it up, Omar. Love to hear it. Come on, FOMO like a mofo. Bitcoin will eclipse the gold this decade. Tell him he'll billy woo. Pump, pump, pump it up. Pump it up if you came and went long. When that dip came, you just aped like King Kong. Look, pump it up if you game and went long. Yeah. When the dip hit, you just aped like King Kong. Hey. Shit out, Chris Robinson. If you got more than five stats in your stack, then get it on. More than five stats in your stack, then get it on. Yeah. Had the people on my back to get a song. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody got smoked like a bong. The Bears! They broke, have a talk, we smoked them like a bong. Uh. Nice to hear, DC. I saw the Bidistava. Got 200,000 by June. We are going to be discussing 200,000 from, I think, Plan B, as well as Dan Tapiero. They both made tweets, interestingly enough, lining up to 200,000. Bitcoin is the totality. Tell them, little germ. Welcome to the stream. Welcome, everyone, joining the stream. Let's pump it up. Family, we up. $2,600 on the day. Not too shabby. Oh, yeah, we heard Kramer, Kramer report that. Thank you. He said, he said, he said, we bought more bags, so we got to sort back. back. Ah. Bitcoin, baby, to the moon. Send it. Can't short your dork. We can't afford that. Nope. Wait for the pump to come. You should have bought that. How many of you took advantage of that dip, man? It feels like just yesterday we were sitting at like 64,000. Go figure. Having party in Puerto Rico? It's not a having party, so no. It's a 100K pump fiesta. So once Bitcoin hits six figures, which will be shortly after the halving, don't get it twisted, but the halving will most likely occur first as the halving is only nine days away. You know I'm hyped today when Bitcoin is pumping like this family, you already know. Yeah, you're not receiving notifications for the stream. Welcome to the club, Omar. YouTube be doing me dirty. Unfortunately, everyone should be getting notifications or not. No one's getting emailed or notified. Um, it's called being shadow banned. Welcome to my world. Again, you can 
Because we blowing it up. Where are we at? <laughs> Come on, everybody. Take two seconds. Hit the like. Appreciate it, Mike. What do we call people who don't listen? <laughs> you already know. Bitcoin to the moon, baby. I definitely bit that dip. Good to hear that, Make Foot and Nader. We're all JV, right? Even Nipsey's a little JV. We aren't spelling teachers here. Perez, no worries about you. Yeah, no need to apologize about spelling. It's all good in the hood, if you know what I mean. Bought the 2023 summer dip. Strap on, we're going to the moon, says Lock Sky. Send it. Welcome, Lock. Short squeeze, more please. Yeah, it's going to pump. They drop food, but it's still not slowing us up. Chris Robinson, 80,000, let's go. We won't stop till the Fed start showing us love. Slowing it up, I can't wait till the Fed start showing us love. The full flag on the chart got me blowing, blowing a what? Like, oh. uh, think about it. It's doable to live by Costa, by coastal Santa Barbara, Puerto Rico, to establish a Puerto Rico residency. It is possible, but in order to take advantage of the tax benefits via Act 60, it has to be your primary residence in Puerto Rico, ultimately meaning 183 days out of the year, which is six months. You got to live in Puerto Rico. Uh, you can't take advantage of it living, let's say, seven months in Santa Barbara, right? And only five months in Puerto Rico, you wouldn't qualify. But if you spent at least 183 days on the island, you can spend the other six months, you know, in Santa Barbara or anywhere else in the world and still benefit. That's how it works. There is only one JV. Tell them, little germ. As a piece of string. string. Rip the dip. Tell him, Peter. 80,000 come in. Send it to Palestinian. Probably bought 10 G's last month. Love it, Omar. Well done. Barry BTC in the building. Only 209 people watching right now. Pump the likes. Pump the stream. It shows 222 here on my stream. And uh, that's just on the tube. We also got the Rumble fam. Shout out to the Rumble fam. Remember to buy all the dips. Wise words there, Omar. If you guys are able to buy the dip, buy the dip. Pump the likes, pump the stream, and let's get it. Please pump Bitcoin to a million. That's the goal, Zach. That's the title of today's thumbnail as well. We're going to be discussing a $1 million biddy. You already know. I've known a few JVs, says Silas. Uh, what about leap year, JV? What about it? Enlighten me. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Smash the likes if you're not poor. There you go, Serge. And if you have sats, you're not poor. Stay away from Holland. All tax here. Man, a lot of taxes there in Holland. I take it. Uh, Barry, smash the likes. as Kevin. Appreciate it. LFG. Let's freaking go. BFGC. I want to see a God Gandal. Don't we all, Jennifer? I think it's a coming. How's the duration determined when figuring out how long you're staying in Puerto Rico? What's the proof uh, or anybody? Well, if you ever got audited, you'd have to prove it. It's not hard to prove where you are. You can look at the transactions, for example, from your debit card, credit card. There's a lot of ways to trace that. So I wouldn't be playing with fire there, Nuck. If you're gonna take advantage of it, actually make Puerto Rico your primary residence. Simple, no shenanigans whatsoever. Don't look towards cheating the system. You'll probably end up in prison. Uh, th that's my warning to you guys. Like is liked, done my biddy. There you go, me, me. Fast forward two months, we're only uh, talking in sats. Bitcoin will be a thing of the rich, big hodlers like us. Tell them. Crypto surge goal is 100,000 subs. You're damn straight alongside $100,000 Bitcoin price action. Send it and let's get it. But anyways, those new to the channel, very important. Smash that subscribe button to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every day just like this. Also, pump the thumbs up because by smashing the likes, you're helping support the stream, which helps out tremendously with a YouTube algorithm. And for Christ's sake, Bitcoin's up $2,500 on the day and we just getting started. So yeah, let's kick it off with our market watch as we do each and every day. Everything back in the green green where it belongs. We got Bitcoin up almost 4% of the daily trading above 71,800 at the time of the live. Ether making big moves up 9% of the day trading at 3,700. Even XRP is up 5% trading at 62 and a half cents. And checking out coinmarketcap.com, the current crypto market cap is sitting at a sexy 2.69 trillion with uh, 96 billion in volume for the past 24 hours with the Bitcoin dominance at 52.4% and the Ether dominance back on the rise at 16 and a half percent. Shout out Matthias or Matthias. I appreciate you becoming a member of the channel. Respect. Shout out to the Hoddle Gang and MicroStrategy members, members of the channel. Respect. But anyways, the top 100 crypto gainers for the past 24 hours. We got Neo leading the pack up 35%. Uh, CKB up 19% and TonCoin up a ton. <laughs> Pun intended. Up 18%. Below that, we have uh, Lido Dow, Jasmine Synthetics, Dog with Hat. 
and Ether. Uh, which altcoins family are you guys most bullish on for this particular bull, Hollage Boy? And checking out the crypto bubbles to get a more of a visual perspective, virtually everything in the green in the top 100, which we love to see. And zooming out on the monthly, uh, we still got some very respectable gainers with the meme coins clearly leading the pack. Uh, we got Whiff 100%. Uh, yeah, we also got some other coins as well. Ton is up 120%. Uh, Stacks up 22%. That's a great project. And Core up almost 300%. And checking out uh, the Crypto Greed and Fear Index. We're currently rated a 76. Extreme Greed. Yesterday, 78. Last week, 79, and last month, an 84 in Extreme Greed. And checking out the Bitcoin Having Countdown, here's where things get in pretty exciting. Uh, only nine and a half days left till Bitcoin Having 2024. Currently scheduled to take place April 18th. We're currently on block 838,349. As soon as we hit 840,000, it's official. The Having is here. And checking out the Time Chain Calendar. As of today, you could only get... 1,395 Satoshis per dollar. Remember a couple of days ago, you can get like almost 1,600 Satoshis for a dollar? Well, this number is gonna continue to go down. So seize the moment, take advantage of it while you still can. You can see the Bitcoin market cap on the climb at 1.41 trillion dollars. So there you have it, family. Welcome everyone joining the stream. Pump the likes, pump the stream as we continue to live. The Bitcoin dream. Jen is the way ahead of the curve. This is true, hence why she is an early Bitcoin OG, early adopter. Devon, welcome. Best crypto channel. There is no second best. Respect. Which one's the best crypto asset? Well, Bitcoin's the best crypto asset. Okay. What's the second best? There is no second best. I'm not saying I'm number one. Oh, I'm sorry, I lied. I'm number one, two, three, four, and five. Tell them. You already know, family. Welcome, everyone, to the number one daily Bitcoin pod. Now, what do we call people who use fiat currency as a store of value? But, like, most of the people who are buying assets at some point want to sell the assets out of profit. Not Bitcoiners. Sorry. People, people, people. That use. That use. Tell him, Michael. Shout out, OG Crypto Bootleg Jerome Smith. Good afternoon. Welcome to the stream. Let's go. Use, use. Fiat, fiat, fiat. Currency. I appreciate the love. He says, uh, as appreciation of the show and all the hard work, pump those likes. Uh, much love, family. Thank you. As a store of, store, of, store, of, store of value. What do we call them, folks? Don't be a stranger now. We call them poor. We call them poor. People. <laughs> Shout out Mike Saylor on the track and little bubble on that remix. OG, you got it right. We call them poor. Por favor, Jennifer, you got that right. Devon, you already know. Barry BTC, daps are given. The buck stops here. Buck the Fed. Get with the program. Poo poo poor. <laughs> Mimi. Uh, yeah. Welcome, Lishville. What it do? Keep hodling, pumping it up. There is no second best crypto channel. This is the best. I greatly appreciate that, Matthias. Matthias. My apologies, mispronouncing the name. Well, I appreciate your support, family. Fiat is Shiat. Exact the Mondo. XTZ is up 5%, says the buck stops here. XTZ. Well, everything is up on the day, just to be fair. Uh, vert, even uh, XRP is up 5% on the day, so you already know. A little late. Hey, fam. Shout out James Elsie. Better late than never. Pump the likes to pump the stream. Come on. Historic day. Bitcoin back above 71,000. We already touched 72, 73. So close to re entering price discovery. And the way we pump during our live streams, it's in play. Just saying, 74,000 in play right now. Can I get an amen? Amen. Yes, yes. Any ladies in the house? You already know Steve Stifler, the Stiffmeister, is asking about the ladies. <laughs> There's only, there is no second best. That's right, Omar. You already know. And if you don't know, now you know. JV, that time chain site, what time zone is that listed in? Great question. I have no clue. We got to look on the site. I assume it's Eastern, but. I'm not 100% positive there. The banks are the crooks. Ain't no such thing as halfway crooks. Shout out Mob Deep. Rest in peace, Prodigy. Lazarus Hand, you're right. The banks are crooks, and there are no such thing as halfway crooks. Can we get a pump watch? Uh, this is very probable. Uh, we may have a pump watch this evening. Uh, new all-time high. Price discovery gets exciting. Why not? My friends don't believe I had to show them. I'll buy the dip. Dips huddle. Man, a friend in non-belief is not a true friend. I mean, how could they not believe you? Makes no sense. What are they tuned into? 
Main lamestream media, no ladies, only memes and dogs. There you go, Barry. Whatever time zone you're in, fam, well, maybe it knows through your IP, right? OG surfer girl in the house. Uh, shout out Moonstone and the OG surfer girl. We appreciate you. Of course, we got ladies in the building. Jennifer, our moderator, lady here, Jay Sice. Let's get it. Time chain is based on your machine's local time. Good to know, David. Thank you for clarification there. Lovely lady right here. Shout out to Mimi. Mimi. We got ladies in the building. Scared to death. Scared to look. Because ain't no such thing as halfway crooks. Jamie Dimon is never around when the beef cooks in his part of town. Similar to Vietnam. You better have the riot gear ready. By the Mac 1 double. <laughs> Hoping for the 420 having Omar. Hoping it may happen uh, 12 days out. We'll soon see. My life has improved so much since stopped trying to help people to get into Bitcoin. Good for you on Matrix. You can lead a horse to the water, but you can't make them drink the biddies. Just saying. DGen channel, cool. Buy the dip after the halving and get ready for the pump passing all-time high. Says Wisdom, dropping the wisdom. What's up from Winnipeg? Shout out Darth Cater. I must ask, where's Darth Melda? We haven't seen her. Jay Sice sounds like a robotic surgeon. Maybe she is. Lady Hodler right here. Shout out Lisa Brault, all the ladies doing it big. That's what's up. Holding down your men there. Floridian IRL, God bless you. God bless family. We appreciate your support. Let's get it. But anyways, fam, let's dive into the five things to watch out for the Bitcoin market this week, shall we? Uh, first and foremost, Bitcoin tap 72,000 as the week begins. That's right. The real move came afterward. However, with the Asia trading session, witnessing sudden upside volatility, which at the time of writing had peaked at 72.6 on Bitstamp. Bitcoin was up just 2.5% the other day already per data from Cointelegraph, or that would be on the day. Uh, as we can see here in the chart, spot Bitcoin buyers are hungry like a younger me. Yes, and this chart shows spot buyers leading derivatives on the move higher, so everything looking bullish right now. Uh, these spot flows are key for several well-known market observers when it comes to bullish momentum sustaining. Uh, quoting SKU, volatility remains moderate into the high time frame picture, meaning price swings of 2000 are to be expected. He also shared, getting closer to band squeeze territory if price compression occurs into late Monday. Still need to see increasing buy volume and spot flows this week to sustain above 70,000 at least in the near term. Well, there you go. And uh, quoting Crypto Ed, if we do get a pullback and print another higher low, load up for a move towards 80,000. Send it. And quoting Dan Crypto Trades, the moment price trades further away and people stop caring is usually when it loses most of its value. Well, there you go. The next factor to keep your eyes out on this week is the CPI and PPI due in key inflation marker. That's right. Another key week for U.S. macroeconomic data is due, potentially reinforcing the Fed's views on rate cuts. While Bitcoiners are mostly focused on the halving, both the CPI and PPI prints for March will come in a few days. The U.S. inflation narrative currently contrasts with signals from Europe. In recent speeches, uh, Jay Powell said that the official feels at ease with data-driven approach to the rate cuts. And uh, quoting him here, it's all about inflation data. This is the Kabisi letter. And the Fed's next steps this week. Uh, the latest estimates for the CME Group FedWatch tool show the odds of a quarter percent cut in either June or July at under 50%. Uh, quoting them here, we're not yet at the point where we can cut interest rates, but things are moving in the right direction, said Andrew Bailey, chairman of the Bank of England. Now, who listens to these mofos, the chairman of the Bank of England? Nobody. Everyone's tuned into crypto news alerts. Just saying. But anyways, next factor to watch out for, Bitcoin miners brace for cost upheaval. That's right. Is Bitcoin having season? You must have forgot, family. It's only nine days out. Attention's increasingly focusing on minor preparations. There are under two weeks, yeah, a week and a half, until the amount of the new Bitcoin unlock per mine block decreases by 50%, the 3.125, ultimately meaning we're going from 900 Bitcoin being awarded today per the miners per day to 450, 50% 50 
20% slice. Now, the Bitcoin mining costs are set to double by the end of the month after the halving, jumping from 40,000 to 80,000 for S19 XPs, commonly utilized by US miners, according to CryptoQuant. And uh, CryptoQuant CEO noted that the mining costs already double what they were in 2020, but the Bitcoin price games have mitigated the impact on miners' bottom line. Of course, quoting them here, since the May 2020 halving, mining costs doubled, yet a parabolic run ensued, covering these costs and achieving profitability. Keyword, profitability. A lack of further upside now could take its toll on the smaller participants with less leeway for fluctuating market forces. Now, the next factor we're going to keep our eyes out on this week, Bitcoin mining difficulty, hash rate prep new highs. That's right. These Bitcoin network fundamentals approach the halving looking stronger than ever. Definitely a good sign. Mining difficulty already near all-time highs is due to increase yet again by 2% on April 11th to pass $85 trillion for the first time in history. Despite nearly a month of consolidatory Bitcoin price action, data from BTC.com shows the difficulty ultimately decreased by less than 1%. The mining pool rate tells a similar story. Raw data from mining pool stats puts the total processing power deployment to the network at 684 exahashes per second. Let's go. Output from known mining pools is practically the highest it's ever been. I mean, these charts don't lie, family. And as we all know, Bitcoin price follows the hash rate. So new all-time highs, incoming price discovery most send it. And the next factor we're going to keep our eyes out on this week, Bitcoin's diamond hands have more selling left. That's right. Older coins are moving on chain as long-term hodlers spent output profit ratio, which is the SOPR, swings more in their favor. For Checkmate, the lead on-chain analyst at analytics firm Glassnode, he shares, this is perfectly normal and should not result in sell-side pressure overcoming the market. The Bitcoin all-time high break looks like about every previous all-time high break. Long-term hodlers start to spend their coins, taking advantage of the new inflowing demand and liquidity. Smart money folks who buy low and sell high. So there you go, family. And also, quoting him here, if we consider a typical uh, low time frame supply drawdown of 14%, we're around 40% of the way through this process, ballpark guesses only. And quoting uh, Dan Tapiero, mo he just recently tweeted this, most remarkable macro correlation break I've seen in some time suggests extreme concern about monetary debasement driven by 60% treasury market increase past five years. Theme not yet widely subscribed. Bullish gold and more so when the rate drops. Vaults Bitcoin to $200,000 plus per coin. And this was him retweeting some of the rates as well as the Kabisi letter updates, uh, which we just went over some as well. And then we have Plan B, creator of the Bitcoin stock to flow model. He just tweeted, one day you wake up and see Bitcoin at 100 Gs without any important news or event, then 200,000 and more. Some will say it's a bubble. Others realize Bitcoin transitioned to the next phase. Next phase, let's go. And when you start to see JV's predictions go from 1 million to 10 million and 100 million, it's that time, family. But anyways, welcome our Herrera. Steve Kingston, what it do? What it do on Matrix C-List? Welcome. Y'all just joining the stream. Pump the likes. Pump the stream. Epic day. Bitcoin still up $2,300. Make some noise for that. This is what Bitcoin was designed to do. Happy days. Monday, Tuesday, happy days. You're bringing back some old memories of the funds. Hey. Just saying. Crypto taxes get way easier when you hodl because there aren't any taxable events and there are no taxes when you hodl, precisely. You make a good point. Scare money don't make money, says the stiffinator. Stiffmeister. How you been, Stiffmeister? <laughs> this is what Bitcoin was designed to do. I, I agree 100% with that sentiment. Steve Kingston, pump it up. New all-time highs in the building. Well, well, well. You know what time it is. Mm -hmm. we what up, Mark? JVD think 30%, 40% dips will happen like before. The new ETFs are here. Uh, yes. I can see 40% dip uh, after hitting a new parabolic peak for the cycle. I think previous cycles we've corrected as much as 90%. Uh, you know, maybe 80, 70 more recently. I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but 30 to 40% is a given, in my opinion. Uh, I think that's easy peasy. Back, Expect extreme volatility, fam. Bitcoin, shit coins, or NFT. Oh, snap. Steve was the Fonz. Now I'm the old Fonzarelli, the Fonzie bear. <laughs> One Bitcoin, how many Satoshis is that? 100 million. So if you are a whole coiner, that means you have 100 million Satoshis. That's right. 
There's no greater feeling than hitting that sweet, sweet Old time line, old time line, old time line in this bitch Rush it pump to the sky, we just buy and get rich you already know. Shout out Little Bubble on the track. All time high, baby. Brett Wilson, 100 million. Facts. We hit 80,000 this week. I second that Leonard Ray. That's right. I agree. 100%. Very doable. Next leg up, 85,000. What up, JV? Have you ever heard of Zipto? No. I've heard of crypto once or twice. Pump the likes, pump the stream. We got 436 people here right now. We should have 4,000 just saying. Shout out to the Rumble fam as well. Greatly appreciate y'all. Uh, this is live and interactive, live and in the flesh. So drop some comments. Let me know where you're tuned in from. Don't be a stranger. Always enjoy your informative stream. Good times and times to buy went down. Amen. Text hex. Respect. Success kid on, Sol what is that? Solana skid. Think about it as age OG meme as Pepe. Uh, top music, great. Cheers to that, Barry. Ronin is an Ethereum sidechain for gaming that offers faster, cheaper transactions to source to crypt. Thank you, the buck stops here for sharing. They very well may. 6102, everyone's 401k. True, but Brandon was trying to get it done, says uh, Jennifer. Never heard of Zippo. Uh, the, like the lighters? Is that a lighter or a Zippo? I've heard of those. I made dinner for the fonts. Oh, no way. Would you make them? Offload the rest. 50,000 Bitcoin is the lowest. We back at it again. Yeah, right back. We back in the black. We back in the green. Got the team all around me. We, we rowdy, rowdy causing, causing the scenes. scenes. CNBC story Jamie Demon says AI may be an impactful as printing press and electricity. Duh. Yeah, you gotta you gotta love Jamie Demon preaching his uh demonic whatever he preaches. <laughs> New all-time high Wednesday. Maybe. We may see it today. We may be Tuesday. We may be Wednesday. Maybe all-time highs throughout the week. Maybe pump watches for JV, CNA all throughout the month. We don't know. That's what makes this so exciting. One thing we do know is when we hit block number 840,000, we're having a having and we're celebrating and I will be live that day. You already know. Always appreciate the energy, JV pumps. It helps me through the bear market. Sitting fat, dumb, and happy full of sats. I dig that. We got to throw those bars into a wrap. Sitting fat, dumb, and happy and full of sats. That's right. Diamond super late for the party. <laughs> yeah. Banksters are the best liars. They sure are. They can't tax their way out of $100 trillion unfunded liabilities. Tell them. Tuesday, we'll have some resistance. But Wednesday, Thursday, new all-time high, says Leonard Ray. Send it. But anyways, fam, let's dive into our next story of the day. Pump the likes, pump the stream. But let's discuss post-having. And uh, according to this headline, Bitcoin needs to hold above 80 Gs, baby, to keep mining profitable Post having. That's right. CryptoQuant CEO says the current cost of mining uses Antminer S19 XPs are going to rise from 40,000 to 80,000 after the Bitcoin halving mid April. The Bitcoin halving, as we know, is a milestone event only occurring every 210,000 blocks, which is roughly every four years. And interestingly, the year of the presidential election in the United States. We can't forget that. The halving event cuts the block rewards earned by the miners. In half. And apart from indirectly impacting the price of Bitcoin, the halving event significantly impacts miner behavior as mining costs double to earn the same amount of BTC. Now, after the May 2020 halving, the price for miners to continue mining profitably rose above 30 Gs. But the price of Bitcoin also pumped to a new all-time high of 69000 during that same cycle. The average Bitcoin mining cost as of April 6th is roughly just shy of 50000 And the Bitcoin price is currently above 71000 at the time. Time of the stream. And after the halving on April 20th, the average mining cost will rise above 80000 for the miners to continue operating profitably. The Bitcoin price must trade higher than that price. And I think that's a given. I think we're most likely be above 80000 within the next week and a half. But let me know your thoughts. Historically, Bitcoin prices have seen a multifold, multifold jump in price after halving. Following the 2012 halving, check it out. The price of Bitcoin increased by 9,000% to $1,162. Mind-boggling, right? And after the 2016 halving, the price of Bitcoin increased by about 4,200% to almost 20,000. And after the 2020 halving, the price of Bitcoin increased by almost 700%, virtually 7x 
to 69,000. Thus, the miners have remained profitable despite fears of going out of business after each halving. Having events also make several mining machines obsolete as they can't compete with the high hash power demand. That's right, the old school miners, I guess the old outdated tech. Now check it out here. You can see new Bitcoin per block before the halving for the 2012 all the way leading to the 2020, the three halvings that come before us. And you can see all that data here. It also shows you the price on halving day and the price 150 days after, which gets quite interesting. Interesting. After each halving, there comes a period when the Bitcoin price remains below the miner's profitable price. This period is marred by uncertainty and increased selling of mining rigs, coupled with many small and lone miners often going out of business. However, as demand increases due to the declining market supply, the price picks up and often rises higher than the average mining costs for miners. So yeah, who cares? Uh, the rewards get cut in half if the price is going to more than 2x to offset it. In fact, we may 5x. Who knows? We could 10x. Nobody knows. And that's what makes this so exciting family. Would you agree? Holla your boy. I'm okay with 8,000%. I am not too greedy. Yeah, what's 8,000%? What is that, like uh, 80x? Correct me if I'm wrong there, but that's pretty substantial because 800 would be 8x, so I think 8,000 8, would be 80x. I think Bitcoin could do 100x from here in our lifetime from where we're at. I'm not saying that's going to happen this cycle, but I see the potential 100%. JV, I think most of the small miners have been long priced out. Good point. Uh, Bitimus Prime. Shout out Parmod Kumar. Appreciate you subbing to number one daily Bitcoin pod. Everyone who subscribes will get an on-screen shout out and I'll shout you out, so be sure to Show some love. We appreciate it, man. We'll throw that love right back at you. I am in the UK, and I think it has rained every day this year. Man, I feel for you, broski. I visited the UK in London, and it did rain every day I was there. I was there for like a week. I was like, oh, man, this gets old. But, hey, it rains here every day, virtually in Puerto Rico. But the difference, it rains for like an hour, and then it's sunny and rainbows. It doesn't rain all day. Spot on, JV. Uh, thank you, Paul. I'm okay with 5X. Right? I'll take a 5X. Uh, what's 5X? 70,000? 7140. Uh, it's like 200. Uh, two, is that like three to four hundred thousand dollars? Why not? Bitcoin having countdown 10 days, baby. 80,000 before the having. Very probable. Buck stop here. Buck the Fed. Just saying. Just the eclipse here in Maine an hour ago. Interesting. Now back to the market. Let's see how the world reacts to the lunar eclipse, right? I'm excited. This is my first. Rodeo. Congratulations, Feral Ferris Fox. You're in for quite the treat. It's uh, pretty lit around having time. I mean, it's a beautiful thing, especially when we're in a bear market for a couple of years, because we get followed by two years of bullishness. And we're virtually going to see a bullish market uh, until 2026. Right, Sometime in 2025, we may likely hit the peak, potentially even happen this year. If the cycles have changed, we sh shall soon find out. It's all speculation at this point. But expect roughly two years of pure bullishness hitting multiple six figures. I'd, I'd say a very bare scenario would be you know, in the six-figure range, but six figures, inevitable. You already know. What are your thoughts on that? Never stops, JV. I know, Paul. Just the range is constant clouds and rain. In the UK. Astrology economics is real, says Craig. Uh, yeah, man. If Bitcoin doesn't reach 80,000, they will stop mining. Uh, that doesn't mean that. I'm sure many of these miners are very smart. So hypothetically, what if we didn't hit 80,000 for a few months? The smart money with the miners, they're not going to turn off their machines. They're just going to maybe use some savings or capital to basically be able to sustain you know what I mean? Maybe being in a loss for a few months so that they can have a parabolic gain a few months later, right? Think of it that way. Also, alt season during the bull run. There you go. Welcome, Adam. It's going to be a roller coaster. Feral, feral socks. Expect volatility in the government shenanigans. Oh, yeah. Uh, extreme government shenanigans. Bitcoin miners run will be highly efficient. The data centers can move their virtual workloads. Uh, Bitcoin miners could. Yep. Good point. Thailand is so hot. I would move to not sure. Uh, are you living in uh, Thailand right now, Jerry? Uh, from hodling for four years, I've got my DCA on Bitcoin down to 28,000 from 47. Nice. I own a full Bitcoin. I am not selling one cent of it. Good for you. Don't sell any of those Satoshis. Again, one Bitcoin's equivalent to 100 million sats. Keep stacking them sats. I Even if Bitcoin goes to zero, I am all in. I'll go broke. <laughs> yeah, the dragon, lunar eclipse, Bitcoin having. This is the sign. Omens fam family, omens. I started getting Bitcoin in September. Now I'm addicted. Welcome to the club, Mark. The miners do not need 80,000. That's definitely wrong. Do the math. 
Well, that's what they're sharing. Who knows? I guess it would depend on so many factors. How much is your electricity, right? What country are you in? Uh, and what type of equipment uh, do you have? I bet you some people can mine Bitcoin for maybe 30000 right now if you got the right equipment and you're scaling the proper way. But for others, it may be 50000 80000 Maybe for some miners, it's 100000 Who knows? Just saying. When 100000 I hope, for 2026. Why is that, Barry? Why do you hope we don't see 100,000 until 2026? Let me know. Second best has been INJ so far. Raul Powell, don't F this up. Hoddle, didn't he already sell all his Bitcoin for like Solana? Correct me if I'm wrong. I think he's he, he got fed up with the, the Bitcoiners in the space. He started knocking them and then he went full-ish coinery. Correct me if I'm wrong there. I am up about 71.1 on my first Bitcoin, doing good. Whoa. That's crazy. And uh, hopefully Jennifer's sitting on thousands of those biddies, just saying. 71,000 per coin in the green. Let's send it. Solar panels, Leonard. Just found 99.99 Bitcoin miner was recommended by Vox on YouTube. Interesting. That's why we use 70% green electricity. It's cheaper, says Stephen. If you are mining, look into the S Corp with a CPA lawyer, not tax advice, says KJM. Going to set it up for the nephew using the solar power. Right on, Steve. More power to you. Heavy in on the Solana. Defo, says Paul. There is no second best. Preach, Jerry. He is big into Solana. That's what I thought. He's going for the Sam coins. Uh, it is what it is. Owning property is cool and all, but property taxes would make me feel like I don't actually custody it. And this is the reality with property family. You already know. That's why we do digital proper property, aka BTC. Pump it up, JV is live. Amen to that. Where you been? Grab a cup, baby. Come and take a sip. Oh my bad. Yo, what's up? Yo. Man, you didn't buy the dip. Who didn't buy the dip? In my Greta voice, how dare you? Just saying. Peter Schiff is right. It's going to zero. Wow. Oh, that's rough. Oh, that's tough. Oh, that's really got to suck. Yeah. Only problem that we got is that we, we didn't, didn't buy enough. enough. Tell them I like Bitcoin, but it's not going to grant me wife changing money. So altcoins for me. Sergio, don't get it twisted, broski. Do not get it twisted. <laughs> I think he still has a lot of nice things to say about Bitcoin. He just feels Solana is going to 10x and do better than Bitcoin for this run, says Unmatrix. Teach their own. What about Caspa? Don't know anything about it. Chris Robinson, appreciate you sending your first super ever. Respect, family. And thanks for your generosity and supporting the stream. Respect. Much appreciated. I only run with the big, the king. Bitcoin, there can only be one king. Gold is going to zero when they figure out how to knock those molecules around. Yeah, kind of like building the pyramids. JV, keep bringing the bitty bangers. You already know, Larry, I got you, bro. Man, I joke, man, I kid. Know exactly what we did. Now we pull up in the whip. Skirt, skirt. Anyways, fam, we the ish. You already know. Bitcoin is for the win. <laughs> Let's dive into next breaking story of the day, the latest with these Hong Kong China ETFs. That's right. I'm going to start with a little tweety tweet uh, coming from here. Multiple Chinese institutions to launch Bitcoin ETFs in Hong Kong. I've been covering this for quite some time. Expect some uh, competition coming out of Hong Kong as far as the ETF arena. So you can see in this tweet from Bitcoin Magazine, just in, 284 billion China Southern Fund. Again, 284 billion Chinese fund has reportedly applied to launch spot Bitcoin ETF via Hong Kong. Let's go. You can't stop an idea whose time has come. Cheers to that. How many of you have been to Hong Kong or China? Let me know. I actually used to live in China, so I know all about that lifestyle. And I've actually visited Hong Kong. Hong Kong reminds me of New York City on steroids. Just saying. Beautiful place to visit. Security Times reported on Monday, financial giants like Harvest Fund and Southern Fund have submitted apps for their Hong Kong arms and are awaiting regulatory approval. The move reflects growing institutional interest despite China's previous hostility towards the biddies. That's right. Harvest Fund manages over $230 billion in total assets, while Southern Fund oversees $280 billion. So approval of the Bitcoin ETF products from such influential institutions could significantly validate Bitcoin in the eyes of all Chinese regulators. 
and investors. The news is also a testament to the evolving landscape of Bitcoin over in China. Despite its previous crackdown on Bitcoin trading as well as mining, the country is now witnessing a shift. And while the mainland remains cautious, we have Hong Kong, who has adopted a more open approach, attracting the attention of Chinese funds. Now, as you all know, Hong Kong is a territory of China, but kind of like how Puerto Rico is just a territory of the United States. It's different. They speak a different language, even. Instead of Mandarin, they speak uh, Cantonese. So things are completely different. By leveraging Hong Kong subsidiaries, major funds can gain exposure to Bitcoin in a compliant manner. The location provides a legal loophole for Chinese companies to participate in the burgoing Bitcoin asset class. Industry insiders are buzzing with anticipation as they predict a significant milestone into Bitcoin. Hong Kong's first Bitcoin ETFs could potentially launch as early as quarter two this year. And guess what? We are in quarter two officially as of April 1st last week. So you already know things are about to get pretty lit, fam. Financial leaders are clearly eager to meet surging investor demand for the Bitcoin access. Bitcoin ETFs offer a regulated on-ramp for both institutional as well as retail players. So there you go, family. This is big news. There's a lot of money coming out of Asia, right? Uh, China, Malaysia, Singapore, a lot of money out here. Uh, Hong Kong. So this is a pretty big deal. And competition is a beautiful thing as the Bitcoin game theory continues in full effect. So you already know. And we here already in quarter two. So only a matter of time. When will the Hong Kong get their Bitcoin? They need in kind. So they have no Coinbase. Good point there, Diamond. We'll see what they actually do launch. Hong Kong girls are cuter, says Andreas. Walsh, someone likes the Hong Kong girls. Okay. Agreed Hong Kong is not China. Yes, different rules. <laughs> it's not the same. I won't mention the obvious because we're on uh, the tube. I got to be careful what I say, but totally different. Uh, JV, fall into the toilet through. In China. No, I've never fell in the toilet for Christ's sake. And depending upon your resources. I mean, I, I taught English at a uh, elementary school slash middle school. And yeah, the toilets were just holes in the ground. Uh, they didn't have actual toilets. They just had holes in the ground. And then they would flush some type of water through their, you know, backward system. And it would always just smell like you'd want to throw up if you went in there. So I'd actually have to put the shirt over my mouth, hold my breath and do what it do. Never made a number two in a Chinese restroom. Uh, I would go to my own apartment where I had an actual, you know, American toilet uh, to do my bidding. But nonetheless, don't get it twisted. Uh, China also has money. Like in Beijing, they have the Lamborghini dealers, Ferraris, uh, they have all the fancy cars and all that. And there's plenty of people with money. And uh, I also taught at a very privileged uh, private school called NDI, New Dynamic Institute. In fact, their headquarters was in Wuhan, out of all places. But long story short, um, this particular school was in the mall and it was extremely expensive for the, you know, you, you're, you the parents basically had to be rich to afford uh, private tutoring from this Institute. And of course, in the nice mall, we had toilets and regular things that you have here in Western society. So don't get it twisted. There's poverty, rich, and a probably uh, dispersing middle class, just like here in the States and everything in between. This is how people get sick and die. Feel free to hit the like button, says McLovin. People don't even celebrate 1,000 increases in the prices anymore. It's about 10,000 price changes now. Good point, Matt. Good point. One billion Chinese hodlers. I mean, you got to remember, China and India have the largest populations on the planet. I think collectively, that's probably close to half the population. Uh, that may be exaggerating a little, but I would imagine India has over 2 billion people. China must have at least over a billion people. Correct me if I'm wrong here. Not American toilet, but normal people toilet. <laughs> Anything under 86 is cheap. My computer took a crap. I'm watching on my YouTube and using my photo to type. This sucks. Thoughts on uh, DGEN is, is, I don't know nothing about it. I just knew DGEN as a degenerate slang term. I didn't know it was a coin or something. China, the play, always ping pong. Yes. Now they take the ping pong very serious and they are extremely good at it. 
Um, I get smoked. I'm decent at ping pong here in the States, but my friends would smoke me. Like the students in the classes, they would smoke me in ping pong. They hold the, the paddle completely different. They stand different and they treat it like an Olympic sport. I think it even is an Olympic sport, but to them it's very serious. And interestingly enough, they also took billiards uh, very seriously, uh, you know, playing pool, shooting pool, whatever. Uh, anyways, the Lambos are just Ferrari r replicas. <laughs> However, some countries that could be next in line to adopt Bitcoin as a legal tender include China, Germany, Indonesia, and the United Kingdom. Yes, all countries, fair play, for real. Like, there are only benefits to adopting uh, Bitcoin, right? It may not be beneficial to the central banking cartels that run the world, but for the people, for the country, I mean, look what El Salvador has accomplished since doing it. Leading the pack, providing the blueprint. Can't beat Forrest Gump and ping pong facts. Or Bruce Lee with the chucks. Y'all seen that AI footage of him hitting the ping pong ball with the chucks? That's AI generated, FYI. But approximately 1.4 billion each, give or take. Uh, thank you. So again, 3 billion population, two countries, mind boggling. With Bitcoin, you can afford to miss the top. With alts, you need to be successful with finding the top, says Steven. Uh, Silas, going number two in the woods sucks when mosquitoes are abundant. They like the bottom. Oh, man, could you imagine your derriere getting hit up with like 100 bites? You can't even sit down no more. You got a stream standing up using a stand-up desk. I'm just saying. Chinese save 50% of their earnings. Maybe it depends on who. Who knows? You got to remember... Majority of people in China are living in poverty, just like in the States, unable and incapable of saving 50% because they're spending, they're living paycheck to paycheck, just like anyone impoverished anywhere else. And in China, I've seen extreme poverty. What's extreme poverty? Walking on the streets with like millions, it feels like millions of people. And then you just see people without limbs bug, begging for money. Like there'll be someone with no, no, no legs and they'll be like this big. And then they'll just wrap onto your leg and they won't let go until you give them money. This is the type of poverty uh, you'll see in China. Like real poverty, like people in the streets uh, begging for their lives because they're going to die soon. And, uh, yeah, real poverty, like probably like nothing you've witnessed in, in, in the States. I would imagine India is the same way. Uh, China has 1.3 billion-ish people. They were overcounting to get more central money. India, 1.4 billion. Thank you, Silas. Can't believe the UK is ready to adopt Bitcoin, says Paul. Salam, family. 32,000 Bitcoin still in play. Then Allah candle, 125,000. I wish you the best, Muhammad. Uh, shout out to all the fam out there in the Middle East. Uh, you know, Dubai, uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, Qatar, all those beautiful places. Respect. I don't know about a 32,000 crash family, but 125. A la candle. I see it. Send it. Sounds like Gary. Pretty much McFootinator. Look into the product. Says uh, Eric. China saved and generated wealth with houses, but this does not work anymore. Yes, because the government seizes the house after you pass. You can't leave it to your children, from my understanding when I was there. That's what they explained to me. So it's like, yes, start all over again. DGen base memes on fire, says VZ. You'll never see 32,000 Bitcoin again. I agree with that, Phil C. You know what I mean? Uh, yes, the entire world is like this, says Litchfield. Exactly. That would be a great time to buy. Yeah, it's like a kit car by selling for the price of a Lambo to the moon, says Chris. Anyways, keep the comments flowing. I greatly appreciate it. Very big day today. Uh, Bitcoin, again, reclaimed 72,000. We also had a solar eclipse and a lot of things happening right now and in the flesh. But here's the latest with the Bollinger Bands. Headline reads, Bitcoin Bollinger Bands signal suggests Bitcoin can double. By July, let's go. How many of you would like to see a 2X bitty price? Holla your boy. The price of Bitcoin can double from the current value of 70 Gs, baby, in as little as three months. According to analysts' take on the widely used momentum indicator, synonymous analyst tech dev shared with his half a million followers the Bitcoin had closed two consecutive months above the upper, upper Bollinger Band, adding that every time Bitcoin had done this in the past, the price doubled within the next three months. This would put Bitcoin at roughly $140,000 by July. Let me know if you agree or disagree with this sentiment from TechDev. The technical analysis, Bollinger Bands are both tools that measure the momentum and volatility of an asset within a certain range. Typically, when the price touches the upper band, it indicates an overbought signal, while touching the lower band indicates an asset being oversold. However, Bollinger Bands are just one of many 
technical indicators available to analysts. And according to Investopedia, they are more reactive than predictive given their use of the past price action and volatility data. The metrics can also differ widely during peak bull and bear markets. Meanwhile, Skybridge Capital CEO, the Mooch, Scaramucci took to CNBC April 6th to predict the Bitcoin would reach as high as 170,000, which we covered here on the podcast, during the cycle and could eventually trade at around half the total value of the global gold market. Quoting him here, I am simply saying it could trade to half the valuation of gold, which is around six to eight times the move from here. Send it. It's not going to happen overnight, he says, but there will be a lot of volatility. I've been preaching that every day. I say leading into the having, even post having, expect extreme volatility, which we welcome because it's a positive. It's number one, an opportunity, and number two, life force. It just means the asset is strong up in this piece. Now, Bitcoin currently commands a market cap of now 1.4 trillion, as I mentioned earlier, while gold boasts a total value of 15.8 trillion. So a Bitcoin were to trade at half the value of gold, its market cap would need to grow roughly six times from here, which would result in a price of roughly $400,000 per Bitcoin. Uh, Quoting Scaramucci here from CNBC's Closing Bell, Bitcoin is up over 140% over the last year, hitting all-time highs last month, fueled by demand from spot ETFs. Tell them. And uh, describing the 10 recently approved spot Bitcoin ETFs as selling machines, the Mooch argued these products would continue to spur increased retail and institutional demand for the crypto asset. Nine of the 10 spot Bitcoin ETFs have seen over $12 billion worth of net inflows, with Grayscale being the odd one out. In contrast, when the gold ETF was launched back in November 2004, it took it nearly one year to notch $10 billion in inflows. And like many other market commentators, Scaramucci viewed the upcoming Bitcoin a Bitcoin halving event currently scheduled for April 20th as a major catalyst for the Bitcoin price appreciation for the short term. Now, another uh, prediction that just came from the Ripple CEO, uh, Brad Garlinghouse, in an April 11th report from CNBC, Garlinghouse predicted that the entire crypto sector would be worth $5 trillion by the end of the year. Looking at the upcoming halving, regulatory development, and increasing popularity of the Bitcoin ETFs as having continued positive effect on wider crypto adoption, quitting them here. I have been around the industry for a long time, and I have seen these trends come and go. I am very optimistic. I think the macro trends, the big picture things like the ETFs, they are driving for the first time real institutional money. That's right. This is the first time in a Bitcoin cycle we have seen the institutional FOMO. This did not exist previous halving when we surpassed roughly that 69,000 top back on November 10th of 2021. So here we are. Three years later, this time we got the institutional FOMO, which officially began January 11th when the ETFs went live. BlackRock already has 260,000 Bitcoin in their possession via their custodian Coinbase. And then we have iBit, uh, what, what that is iBit, the BlackRock one. And then we have Fidelity, I meant to say. And collectively, they're just killing it. And this ain't slowing down. It's like a snowball effect. The massive inflows are likely to continue, which will absolutely lead to a supply shock, especially with a Bitcoin having here in the next week. So you already know. Best Bitcoin show out there, says Political Hack. Respect, family. Much respect. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's the 10 Sass Commandments. You already know. Shout out Biggie. We just pit. Old time line, old time line, old time line. This bitch, watch it pump to the sky. We just buy and get rich. Yeah, these guys are funny. They want corrections on top of corrections on top of corrections. How about we send them blessings on blessings on blessings? Done. Going closer to the having. You already know, Devon. It's getting pretty exciting, pretty lit up in here. You lying son of a about China. Why would you say that? First and foremost, Peter, is it because you're Chinese and you don't believe another uh, foreigner would ever live in your country? Or why would you say that? Lying son of a what about China? Because trust anything I say, I say it because I believe it to be true. And what would uh, Scarface say? Even when I lie, Chico, I tell the truth. That's how I feel because I don't lie. Uh, My gaming pick Wilder World is pumping this game. Right on. Big hairy back Chicago bear CME. Bitcoin 72 plus. They're a Chicago team that always wins. No Moonstone, says Leonard Ray. This is going to be a super cycle. I love to see that. The only question is, would I be able to hold long enough? I could at least liquidate enough to break even. Vanguard CEO fired for not getting into the Bitcoin game. That's right, McFootinator. Good point. He's going to step down before the end of the year. They didn't embrace the biddies. 
All you are conservative. Agree, Jacob. We are conservative, I think, as well. Wilder World is still a 50x. The buck stops here. Micro strategy and Coinbase stock surge. Word unidentified. Blessings from Arizona. A meme is just a joke. All time highs. Let's go, real boss man. I am Chinese. We are all Chinese, says the stiffinator. Cheers. I've got my whole Bitcoin and I've got my other portfolio. These coins on listing right on. Hey, JV lived in China. That is funny, right? It's the truth, but nonetheless, uh, always don't forget about Qatar. Can't wait for them to pump as well. That's right. They're sitting on a half a trillion sovereign wealth fund. Rumor has it. Looking to get into the biddies. Buying at the all-time high has historically been a good bet. If we hold solid on Bitcoin price this week, we cancel last week's hanging man candle. Buckle up to the moon rocket. Send it. 420 having. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's get it. Why do people have to disrespect we must come to understanding that we respect one another. I guess it depends on uh, what what side of the bed we wake up on, right? Some days we're all very respectful. Other days it's like, you diss me, I'm going to diss you right back. That's just the way of the world. And speaking of diss tracks, uh, you guys see J. Cole's apology for dissing Kendrick Lamar? Something you'll never expect to see in hip-hop. <laughs> Kind of mind-boggling, we can discuss later. Anyways, if anyone even cares. I am salty, says T. Dillard. You got to do what you got to do. Hello from Thailand. Shout out, yo, what it do? Qatar better move fast. I'm using my meme portfolio to feed my biddies. You got to do what you got to do. More banks collapsing, more money printing. Nigeria bankrupt, says Jacob. Wild world we living in, yo. Welcome to the wild, wild west. Yes. Oh, Muhammad is here. He already said they're still they're still anticipating thirty two thousand dollar Bitcoin drop, but then one hundred and twenty five thousand. That's what he said earlier. South America bankrupt. Does free will exist? Yes, to an extent. Yes, to an extent. If you're not an influencer, you have a lot of free will. You could say anything you want. You get. You could exercise your First Amendment right to f freedom of speech. If you're an influencer, like, and I'll give you an extreme example, like a uh, uh, who's the big basketball players, um, uh, LeBron, then you pretty much have to sell your soul to China and uh, pump their agenda because there is no free will as an influencer, or there is no freedom of speech unless you're Andrew Tate, and then you get arrested relentlessly to try to teach you a lesson from the matrix. That's the world we're living in, family. Hope you guys recognize that. The more influential you become, the less likely you are to speak freely. Uh, ask Candace Owens that one. You know what I mean? She just get cut from the Daily Wire for saying Christ is king. That's the world we're living in. Just FYI. If you don't believe in free will, you'll never possess it. That's right. That's a good point there, Greg. Uh, anyone else swap a new crypto on MetaMask? It says no value because it hasn't been verified. That's scary. I don't trust MetaMask family because that's the company consensus. Those are the people behind ETH and ETHgate. As the third quarter of 2023, global debt reached 307 trillion, which is a record. Yup, I believe in free willy. LaFlop James, precisely. Don't trust these mofos. I don't care if they're athletes, celebrities, musicians. They're bought and paid for by someone trust that. You know what I mean? I agree, JV, says Devon. Right on. Anyways, family, next story of the day. Let's dive in. Pump the likes, pump the stream. Welcome everyone living the Bitcoin dream. Let's discuss this next leg up. Headline here reads, 85,000. Bitcoin breaks out nearing a new all-time high as analysts weigh the possible. Next leg up. That's right. According to liquidation data from CoinGlass, the crypto markets have seen more than 187 million in liquidations in the last 24 hours, the majority of which are the short sellers. In the last day, Bitcoin liquidations alone have accounted for $78 million. Bitcoin shot up today as high as 72.6 from its seven-day low of 65 Gs. How many of you seized the moment and took advantage of the dip? Put a BTFD in that live chat. We got Bitcoin trading at closer to 72,000 at the time of this live, which means what more than 3% in the past 24 hours. And over the same period, Ethereum liquidations reached 40 million. The leading smart contract platform by market cap is trading for 3600 at this time up 7% in the last 24 hours. And as Bitcoin rallies, several crypto analysts are turning bullish on the crypto king and believe the top digital asset by market cap could soon soar past last month's all-time high of 73,800 
ish. I'm predicting this week we re enter this price discovery mode. What are your thoughts on that? The analyst, uh, known as Rat Capital, believes the Bitcoin is now convincingly broken out of the trading range between 69 and 65,000. Quoting him alongside this chart, the breakout from the weekly range has now been confirmed. And closely followed analyst Ali Martinez said, Bitcoin can soar to 85,000 if it can stay above the key level of 70,000. 800, quoting him or her here, whoever Ali is. Bitcoin appears to be breaking out. If Bitcoin can hold above 70,800, the next target becomes 85,000. And looking at the chart, which you can see on your screen, he suggests Bitcoin is heading beyond the 85,000 level after consolidating within a bullish triangle pattern. Meanwhile, Plan B, creator of the Bitcoin Stock to Flow model, suggests Bitcoin will be higher than a half a million by 2025. Let's go. Quoting him here. So the next top will not be in this year, 2024, but in the next year, 2025. That top, some people talk about $200,000 as the next top. You can see on this chart, that would be very underwhelming. In fact, from a stock to flow perspective, we need a top that is much higher than the average, 500,000. So let's say 600, 700, maybe even a million dollars. So the top will be higher than 500,000 per coin in 2025. Let me know if you agree or disagree with that from the stock to flow plan B and everything I just shared with you as far as the next leg up, 85,000 incoming send it. I'm going to read some of these comments out loud before we dive into our featured story of the day and discuss Bitcoin smashing a million dollars per coin this year in 2024, as per Samson Mao and his latest predictions. But welcome everyone joining the stream. Pump the likes, pump the stream. Don't be a stranger. Let's get it. What it do, what it do. Let's freaking go. Rocket ship to the moon times 10. Amen. Bitcoin has helped out so many people. Buck the banks and buck the Fed while we're at it. It just sounds fun even to say that. Buck the Fed. Buck the Fed, Devon. We're going to buck the Fed together. Let's buck the Fed up. You know what I mean? I'm fed up. Time to buck the Fed up. Just saying. Locks guy, do you guys know ETH is running on Amazon servers? <laughs> I didn't know that. Uh, plan B is off my two-year window. 1.8 million sits at the current 1.236. Fibonacci, do your own technical analysis, says Greg. Holy crap, 72 grand. Holy moly, Wally. Leave it to Beaver. Nice. I'm paraphrasing a little to keep it entertaining, guys. Hope you guys understand that. So good to see 72,000 this morning. Buck the Fed. I like that hashtag. I got a special ring to it. Thanks for the reminder, Serge. That's right. Stock the flow model as of March 1st printed the first red dot, which means we're officially in a bull cycle. And that's the first of many red dots to come. So good point there. Fight the quality, flight the quality. That's right. Bitcoin is the ultimate flight to quality. Flight to safety. It's a hedge against inflation. It's a hedge against deflation. It's an insurance policy. Time for the pump watch. Sounds like it, Grant. How many of you going to watch the next pump watch as we enter price discovery? Holla, 80,000 incoming. FJB and buck the Fed. I dig it. We shall hope for a top in 2025. Would be difficult to time a top in 2024. The most this cycle we could see is 300,000 for the biddies. I'm batting on 250,000, says Josh. Well, Bitcoin has no top because fiat has no bottom is the reality. Family, I believe that. Bitcoin is so freaking crabbish. <laughs> crabbish. Smash the likes and buck the Fed. Now we're talking McFootinator. Red dot to the moon. Ready for the pump wash, Devon. JV, do you think there will be enough Lambos for the... No, there won't. You got you. Some of you guys are going to cop Raris, uh, Porsches. Mark my word, we're going to run out of Lambos. And some people prefer the Raris to begin with. I'm more of a Rari guy. Just saying. <laughs> I had my Hong Kong lady once, for real. You know what they got in Hong Kong that's delicious? The best, what are those called? Um, they steam them. I don't know why it slipped in my head all of a sudden. Dumplings. <laughs> Steamed dumplings are delicious in Hong Kong. FJB, buck the Fed. Ghost face killer. No one could be illa. JB, you sound like Robin in Batman's old show. Leave it to Beaver. When Bitcoin has the reward given to the contributors securing the network is reduced 50%, directly impacting the rate at which new Bitcoins introduced into that is correct. Buck the stops here. Buck stops here. That's correct. Just Alexis. Some of you guys, out of respect for Bankman Freed, are going to be copping Corollas when Bitcoin's a million dollars. You're like, yeah, you know what? Cars aren't everything. I'm just going to get the new Corolla out of respect for Bankman Freed. 
Because that's what allegedly he was driving around when he was worth uh, 10 to $30 billion, right? <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, there you go. Rolls Royce sounds, sounds better to me as well. You know what I mean? I'm Austin. Watch the eclipse. Good times. Bitcoin to the moon, baby. 222, 550, 2025, Rari or Porsche GT3. How about both? Ferrari Tessarosa. That's right. My tracks are Rocha like Ferrari Testarossa and the Tacoma. You got to do what you got to do. Sometimes you just need a truck. Buck the Fed. Cop the truck. Four-door Porsche just for driving around town. Amen to that. I drive the Corolla. You're already living the life, everlasting bliss. Would Kanye say, what the F you think I rap for to push up fucking RAV4? <laughs> Scotty, take us home. Warp speed, Goldwing motorcycle, 2025. Many of you are going to lose a lot of money. I got my eye on the Tesla Cybertruck. Buy Bitcoin, Solana, and Tesla, then just sit back. What's your chauffeur driving? Mine's a double R, Rolls Royce. I dig it. Rough Riders. I want to pay my current house with one bitty. I dig it. Bitcoin. Keep stacking stats, family. But anyways, without further ado... Now for our feature story of the day. Let's discuss the latest from Samson Mao. He says, I think this year we hit a million. And uh, I agree. It's definitely doable. Let's leave it at that and let's discuss it. Welcome everyone just joining the stream. You can see the headline here and also some of the other headlines. Uh, One million Bitcoin advocate Samson Mao likens Bitcoin ETFs to Matrix's Neo. The one. How many of you feeling like the one right now? Holla. And this headline reads, One million Bitcoin advocate uh, Samson Mao names key Bitcoin indicator to watch. So we're going to be discussing this as well as this recent tweet he shared. Weak-handed sellers are decreasing. Diamond-handed Bitcoin hodlers are increasing. This is the key indicator to watch. So let's break all this baby down right now. And shout out to Samson Mao, uh, founder of Jan3. So here we go. Samson Mao reminded his army of followers about the scene in the Matrix when Neo dives into Agent Smith and the machine explodes with Neo emerging, choosing another agent to destroy in the same manner. He compared it to the current situation of the market where Bitcoin has dived into the legacy financial system using spot ETFs and they are working now inside it. Mal did not offer any particular outcome, just saying that he is watching this exciting show very attentively, wondering what will happen next and whether Bitcoin ETFs will succeed in transforming the traditional financial system. Yeah, I mean, as he shared here, you know, in the Matrix, when Neo dives into Agent Smith with the ETS, Bitcoin is now inside the legacy financial system. I wonder what happens next. That's right. The overall feel of his tweet in the previous post he shared hints that he expects Bitcoin to change the legacy system forever, Laura. Now, Mao has a strong belief that Bitcoin will definitely reach a million dollars in the near future. And the recently launched spot ETS are bringing that victorious moment closer. Can you say triumphant victory? Now, let's get more detailed into the actual prediction of Bitcoin hitting a million dollars. So let's break it down. Ex Blockstream Chief Strategy Officer Samson Mao predicts Bitcoin hit in a million by 2025, stating in a recent interview what Bitcoin did with Peter McCormick. He said, I think this year we hit a million, if not this year, the next year, but it is coming very soon. Mao pointed out the demand for Bitcoin significantly outpacing supply, with ETFs alone pulling in around 3,500 to 4,000 biddies per day, which is roughly 1.4 million Bitcoin per year. And while exchanges hold approximately 2.2 million Bitcoins, he believes this will rapidly drain the pool of available Bitcoins. That's right. We call that a supply shock. And uh, CryptoQuant uh, founder predicts within 12 months, we get that supply shock. Now, additionally, Mao introduced the concept of the Veblen effect, which I have shared here on the show, suggesting that Bitcoin becomes more valuable. It also will become more desirable due to its perceived value. We call this FOMO family, fear of missing out. He believes that once Bitcoin reaches parity with gold's market cap, estimated at 450 to $500,000 per Bitcoin, it'll cross a crucial threshold and begin to demonetize gold. Quoting him here from the interview, once you cross that Veblen threshold, you start start to demonetize gold because now this thing is gold. It's multi-trillion dollars. We are already trillion, but like eight to 12 trillion dollar market cap. He explained, then you start to eat into gold because people see it as equivalent to gold. It is. 
the new gold. Now, he anticipates that media narratives will support this notion, further driving the shift from gold to Bitcoin. His prediction comes at a time when institutional interest in Bitcoin is at an all-time high, with major corporations and financial institutions adding the crypto to their balance sheet. The upcoming Bitcoin halving will reduce the mining reward. As we know, there's currently 900 Bitcoins awarded per day to the miners. That's about to get chopped in half, the 450. And in a recent thread, Samson shared his thoughts on the potential approval of an Ethereum ETF by the SEC. He believes that regardless of the outcome, both approval and rejection scenarios are mega bearish for Ether. Mao argues that the SEC has footgunned themselves by approving Ether futures alongside Bitcoin futures, which rationally necessitates the approval of an ETH spot ETF for the same reason as for the Bitcoin one. Quoting him here, Ethereum ETF approvals are further complicated by the staking. What kind of commodity generates a yield? What kind of commodity ETF prints 70% of its new supply out of thin air? What kind of commodity ETF tweaks its own monetary policy at will? And these are all very valid questions. How many of you watched the recent ETH gate video put out by James O'Keefe? I highly encourage you to check it out. I retweeted it over on X. Now, Mal questions the nature of a commodity that generates a yield, printing 70% of the supply out of air and tweaks its own monetary policy at will. And additionally, Mal believes that the current price appreciation of Ethereum is purely speculative, driven by crypto traders and Ethereum insiders hoping for the ETF approval rather than genuine capital inflows. He predicts that if an Ethereum spot ETF is not approved, speculators will sell, and while if it is approved, existing hodlers will sell, and no one will buy due to the ETF's structurally defective nature, as it would not provide staking yields and would incur management fees, resulting in an automatic loss of 5 to 6% per year for the ETF shareholders. So there you have it. Uh, crypto fam, let me know your thoughts on his 1 million price prediction for this peak. And do you think we hit the cycle peak this year in 2024? Or will it be the following year in 2025? Now, some of the factors drastically different for this cycle in particular versus the previous three that come before us. As I pointed out earlier, this is the first time in Bitcoin history the halving is not being driven by retail. However, institutional FOMO, something which did not exist previous cycles. Also, another thing that stands out for the first time in Bitcoin history, we broke the previous all-time high pre-halving. That's right. We broke 69,000, which was the current all-time high since November 10th of 2021, a few weeks ago. When we tapped 70,000, then we broke it again, eventually tapped 73,800, which is the current all-time high. So does that mean all previous models are broken. And unlike the previous cycles, maybe we have a super cycle. Maybe we witness hyper Bitcoinization. Maybe the dollar suffers from hyper inflation. Maybe there's some black swans I'm not even considering right now that can play a role or effect. Just like last year, we had the regional banking crisis, which drove Bitcoin parabolic first quarter of the year. There are still banking crises going on right now, which have not been fixed. I think people are losing uh, trust in the legacy financial system. They're not trusting bankers, let alone politicians and all these corrupt mofos that are put in front of them. We all know the corruption is from the top down. We recognize that with the Jamie Demons of the world, JP Morgan Chase bashing the Bitcoin. Remember, let's not forget Larry Fink a few years ago, once called Bitcoin an index for money laundering. Today, BlackRock, the world's largest asset manager in the world in which Mr. Lawrence Fink is the CEO, they have 260,000 Bitcoin. They acquired more Bitcoin in the past less than three months than it took MicroStrategy four years to achieve. This is the institutional FOMO playing out in real time. Earlier in the show, I shared breaking news. China launching ETFs out of Hong Kong. Big news. There's big money. And a lot of the big money is looking to park itself into the apex predator for obvious reasons, right? It's a hedge against inflation, a hedge against deflation. It's a hedge against corrupt politicians. It's perfect money. It's pristine collateral. It's incorruptible. It's uneff wittable It's unconfiscatable. It's the king for a reason. And as we continue to eat away at the gold market cap, you already know what's going to happen. Before you know it, $400,000, $500,000 Bitcoin price, my projection for this particular cycle. And hey, take it with a grain of salt because 
I am not Nostradamus. I am just an entertainment-based podcaster who speaks his opinion, right? And speaks very openly about it. I can foresee, bear scenario, Bitcoin smashing 222,000 the cycle. I can see a bull scenario, Bitcoin smashing $750,000 per coin this cycle. But I want to know your thoughts. Where do you feel the Bitcoin price is likely to take us leading into the halving in roughly nine freaking days? Where are we going to be? And where are we going to be post halving? Where are we going to be by the end of the year? Where are we going to be for this cycle peak? Where are you going to be? Hopefully watching the stream because I'm going to be documenting every single day price action here during this bull, just like we did during the bear. I'm not here for, you know what I mean? Just a quick time of fun together. I'm here for the long haul. We've been through hell together, right? We've corrected from 69,000 down to 15,000. We maintained our optimism. We've been preaching the truth. I've been preaching the holy gospel of Satoshi, regardless if we're up, regardless if we're down, because this is bigger than perfect money. This is bigger than what we just see on the screen with one Bitcoin equivalent to roughly 72,000. This is freedom for humanity. And what Bitcoin represents for the future of the human race, you can't put a price on. Hence, Bitcoin is priceless. Bitcoin has no top because fiat has no bottom and corruption has no end. Hence, Bitcoin for the win. Can I get an amen? And with that being shared, fam, where's the Bitcoin price action likely to take us next? Holla. And hopefully you enjoyed today's rant. And uh, let's do some live Q&A, shall we? Tell them, JV has big crystal balls. You're damn straight. All I know is ordinals cost me hundreds of transaction fees of a month back, right? End of the year, SC to Port Puerto Rico. Let's go, Jay Ford. 78 pre-having high, 120 region conservative. What does everyone else think? I dig it, I dig it. I predict 350,000 end of the year, 1.14 Fibonacci, two years, 1.8 million. Send it. Thanks for the hard work. These podcasts keep me positive. Cheers to that family. Friday, Tesla dropped the AI robot. Oh boy. Oh boy. Larry Fink does not want the biddies to go so fast. 1 million will also harm the dollar. Larry will not accept. Preach JV. Shit out McKing. I sold my ETH and bought a number 180,000 this week. Mark, send it. JV, will you be here at 500,000? I will be here. I swear by the, yes, I'm going to be here. By clogging up the system. Your energy is amazing, bro. Thanks for the great content. Yeah, I just want you to realize there's a bigger picture behind this. We always focus on the price, but honestly, it's freaking irrelevant. Uh, I'm so passionate about this because of what it represents. It gives people hope. It uh, is the future, right? We got CBDCs and Bitcoin. Choose accordingly. We got God and Satan, right? Who are you following? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's all you need to know. You got God and Satan. You got fiat, which is Satan, and Bitcoin, which represents God. Those are your two choices. And Satan leads to enslavement, poverty, and all the bad stuff that comes along with it. Meanwhile, Bitcoin leads to sovereignty, freedom, you know what I mean, prosperity, all that good stuff. So choose accordingly. Working hard to make the dirty fiat, living well below my means, convert fiat to the Bitcoin and a few other things. Amen. Let's smoke those balls. You smoke balls? No way. Fiat equals poor. God. Amen. Who you choose? You can't serve both. You either serve God or Satan. That's the bigger picture. If we want to scale up on a macro level, that's what this is about. Are we serving fiat slash CBDCs, which is Satan? Or are we serving perfect money for the first time in human history, which is God? Bitcoin, God, hacking, humanity. Choice is yours, right? Choice is yours. Sky Mooch, <laughs> the Bidango. I thought the devil went to Georgia. JV, thanks for the positive. You're, you're very welcome. Wealth is in the mind and not the pocket. Preach. Can you explain? Are you saying you are stacking sats in the exchange? Stacking them sats. Pumping it up. We are already rich and abundant. And F the government. Yeah, we are already rich and abundant. F the motherfucking government. How about a little Screaming Max? I think I got you on that, big dog. I don't know if I got Screaming Max, but I know I got a version of Max here. Uh, let's see what I come up with. Here we go. 
Wall Street is fraud, America is fraud, the world is fraud, banks are fraud, central banks are fraud. We live in an era of fraud. It's all coin and things like it is the equivalent of the red pill. All based on fraud and they get a percentage of the fraud. That's the business model. Facts. <laughs> That's the freaking business model. All ran by fraud and they get a percentage of the fraud. And speaking of fraudsters. Bitcoin, etc. You pointed out the only true use case for it is criminals, drug traffickers, anti-money laundering. Tax avoidance. Suggest that there is any moral or ethical aspect to anything that's going on now is to be completely naive about the fact that we live in an era dominated by financial terrorists. Terrorists. Tell them, Max. Bitcoin at two and a half million. Now we're talking greedy staff. Let's go. That's right. License is all run by fraud. That's the business model. They get a percentage of it. $2.4 billion per day. Interest, U.S. government. I have five wallets. I refuse to sell any of my biddies out of them. I will get another one for my home and car. I won't touch my current wallets. There you go. Don't touch. Terrorists. Can't touch this. Dun, 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 dun. Jihadis of banking. Criminals. Drug traffickers. Anti-money laundering. Tax avoidance. Criminals, the largest corporate fine at the time. You already know, guys. Uh, as a tie, I love everyone equally. Also hate everyone equally. Well, there's fair play there, yo. Respect. I like God's hack on us all. There you go, T. Dillard. There you go. There you go. My dog said, choose gold and Bitcoin. Your dog is smart. Are you sure he didn't say, give me the treats? Give me the treats. Give me the treats. Uh, yes, for one million per bitty, send it. One milli, pump it up, pump it up. Yeah, man, you already know. Steering away from the real estate, going towards the biddies. Why does he say anti-money laundering? That's good. Exactly why it's a hilarious parody of a track with Jamie Demon. He's just sp spitting bars, this guy. The largest corporate fine at the time. $13 billion, that's billion. For selling unsecuritized mortgage loans. For selling unsecuritized mortgage loans. Ruining people's lives. Fiat is Ponzi. Yes. We're a bunch of criminals. Ruining people's lives. Criminals. Drug traffickers. The best track of all time. They're here to kill you and themselves. They don't care because they're trained at madrasas called Princeton, Harvard, and Yale. Tell them, Max. Max always keeping it real. Don't say the treat word, JV. My dog just went nuts. No way. Through the stream. Wow. Bitcoin seller buy now. Buy or die. Remember the freaking uh, P. Diddy voting propaganda it was like vote or die and he'd go to all the communities supporting like barack obama vote or die and you know he'd always represent the dems and whatever what if we just say buy or die that's a pretty good slogan for bitcoin no it's like you either buy or you get left behind and die it's actually a pretty it's better than a vote or die i don't like the vote or die propaganda personally they used to push that in the schools as well I'm like, damn it. You got our, you know, the teachers rocking the voter die shirts, trying to be cool. Yeah, I listen to Biggie too. Vote or die. That's what P. Diddy says. Anyways, when people lose confidence in the fiat currency, they printed paper losses its value. P paper loses its value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyways, fam, it's getting a little dark here. I don't know if you notice, it's getting a little grainy. Uh, I'm losing natural lighting. So we're going to continue with the uncensored version of the pod, especially with the nature of the conversation I'm getting into right now. So head on over to Rumble right now. It's rumble.cryptonewsalerts.net. There's always a link in the description, fam. Um, or you can just open the Rumble app and type Crypto News Alerts. You can't miss it. Um, but yeah, uh, stack sats or die. That's the new slogan. Just saying. Uh, but anyways, fam, greatly appreciate y'all support. We're going to continue with the uncensored version of the pod exclusively only on Rumble. It is free to join Rumble. If you've never been there, I highly encourage you to check it out. It's a video platform very similar to YouTube. The only difference is they don't censor free speech and they don't shadow ban or terminate channels for speaking the truth. Uh, so that's the big difference. So I encourage you to join us there. It's going to be pretty lit as it always is uh, each and every day as I'm there every day. But head on over to Rumble right now and let's get this mofo uncensored party started, shall we? All right, YouTube stream should be finito. 